my work involves use of fundamental principles of physics through powerful computer simulations to determine how atoms and electrons are organized in space and time in a material. So, these simulations are called first principles simulations, means they do not assume anything experimentally other than the fact that this material is made up of these elements and this is the structure it may have. And using this information, uh, we predict behavior of the material or properties of a material which are relevant to wide range of applications from semiconductors in devices to jet engines, the blades which are used in jet engines. There are three ways in which this computational simulations of materials are effective. One is they understand existing materials, how a material behaves, why carbon is so different from silicon for example. The second role these simulations play is they complement experiments and that is particularly relevant to a country like India because you know we can't have, we don't have so much funding to have fancy equipment. The third role these simulations play which is relatively recent is to predict a material altogether from a simulation. Simulations are in spite of the limitations and errors they have. They are very powerful and cost effective. Theory and simulations can screen which material should be explored in depth in the lab in real terms. One area which I have been very active in is called smart materials. These are materials which can sense changes in environment and you can use the same material to actuate and respond to the changes in the environment. So, some of the materials that I work on uh, are ferroelectric materials. These are like magnets, but uh, electrical analog of magnets. So, they have uh, instead of north and south pole, they have a electric dipole spontaneously present in them, which is what is giving them the fundamentally interesting properties. These materials are used as smart materials because they can sense changes in mechanical environment like pressure in the surrounding and create an electrical signal. Likewise, you can apply electrical signal to a piezoelectric material and make it expand or contract. Okay? So, that is why they can sense and actuate and they are called smart materials. And ferroelectrics can also store memory due to this electric dipole that they have. So, they are used in non-volatile computer memories where you can switch off the power and memory is still retained. Now, the fundamental question I asked in these materials is, if you take a ferroelectric material which are often used in the form of a film, what happens to their properties if the film is extremely thin? That was an important question we answered and we showed that actually the nature of ferroelectricity does change in a, some unexpected way at nanoscale but that can also be useful for certain other technological applications. And one of the very recent, in 2014 we published this work, we predicted what is called as a two-dimensional ferroelectric, uh, which was very counterintuitive. Here we sort of used very different mechanism and showed that a very thin film of a material called molybdenum sulphide in a specific structure can support ferroelectricity. So that was sort of unexpected result. And based on that result, we proposed a new technology altogether called dipole electronic technology, where in a single transistor, you can have a logic device built in it. So, it will have low power, high density and interesting applications in digital, digital circuits. So, another class of materials which I am working on in the last few years are called topological insulators. These are like wood. But if you cut a surface of that material, you get a very nice metallic conduct, electrical conductor on the surface alone. And what my work showed is a very interesting fundamental result that uh, to have a topological material, there are also efforts that you start with an ordinary insulator and you compress it by using pressure and convert it to a topological insulator. It is like pressure driven transition from normal insulator 
to this interesting, exciting topological insulator. What we showed is at the point where that transition occurs, electrons and vibrations in a material are so strongly together that you cannot separate their motion. And the physics of that material near that transition is very fascinating because of that. It's called broken adiabaticity, means electrons move at the same speeds as atoms in that material. And as a result, you see some interesting anomalies in the experiment at that transition. So the most interesting, which is yet to be published, uh, is a material called Dirac semi-metal. These are also topologically interesting electronic materials, but they are metallic in their bulk form. Dirac semi-metal is a st electronic state of a material which is parent to many other electronic states that people are familiar with today. As of now, not many materials are known to exhibit that electronic quantum state. And we have proposed an existing material, if you again apply certain type of st mechanical stress to it, can become a beautiful Dirac semi-metal. That is also considered as a three-dimensional analog of graphene. Okay? In graphene, you have relativistic quantum electronic part particles in two dimensions. Here, you have the same ones in 3D. So that's where I find it very enjoyable and exciting to develop a material which will exhibit that behavior, like a 3D graphene. Yeah, the impact of Infosys Prize is very singular. and uh, It's global, it is singular, and it's going to really help me in attracting bright students. Because the name Infosys is known across the globe. This recognition is also for my work, also for my own self and my students and group. So definitely it's going to make a big difference in developing further, uh, getting more and more bright minds to get interested to work with in this area and with me as well.